All right, we are back here on Sportsline. Phone lines are open, 737-PLUS. That's 737-7767 if you want to chime in on the conversation tonight. Take us any direction you would like to go, frankly, in the sports world. But right now, let's talk a little bit more about Middle Tennessee. They continue to just chug along. 22-5 and five on the year. They've won nine in a row. Still just that one loss in Conference USA play. Three games left in the regular season. They may have to win them all to win the league outright. That's how bunched it is. A couple teams right behind with just two losses in conference play. But most importantly for middle, it's a chance to continue to build up the RPI. A couple of big wins last week. Southern Miss on Thursday, Louisiana Tech on Saturday. And the Louisiana Tech win was the 400th win in Kermit Davis's young coaching career at the Division I level. So congratulations to him. Nick King, 25 points, 10 rebounds. Another monster effort from the transfer from Alabama as middle wins 87-70 in Reston. And I got the chance last night on the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central to catch up with Kermit Davis and give him our congratulations. And we are thrilled to be joined by Middle Tennessee basketball coach Kermit Davis on the phone. 400 wins, quite the accomplishment. And Coach, I know you're not old, so you must be doing something right with these X's and O's. <laughs> well, really good players, great assistant coaches, and I tell you what, Steve, I mean, I didn't, I had no idea, I wasn't even thinking, you know, about anything except just trying to, to beat Louisiana Tech, and I walked in the locker room, and our players had put it up on the on the board, so, but, you know, 400 Division One wins is, it means, you obviously, you've lasted a period of time, and uh, you've been around some really good players. Sure have. It seems like you just reload every year now. This season, it's Nick King that should be the Conference USA Player of the Year. How has he impacted your team, both as a leader and with his production? Well, you know, we, we knew Nick was so talented. You know, and you, you saw it in June. He came in. He'd been inactive for about a year, been sick at Alabama, and lost about 14 or 15 pounds, got his body fat down. But once you got in shape, you saw his talent, and you knew how kind of how we play in our system – that boy, he can make a three, he can drive it. He's really been a little better than what we thought because of he's rebounded at such at a high level. I mean, 10 double-doubles uh, so far this year. He, in the last five or six, seven games, he's shooting almost 42 43% from three, so he can really stretch the defense out. The win in Louisiana Tech gives you now 12 road wins this season. That's the most of anyone in the country. What has made this team so tough, even in those hostile environments? You know, it's just a poise down the stretch, Steve. I mean, we have been in so many close games on the road. I mean, just whether it's it's at Vanderbilt, at Murray State, at Old Dominion, at Western Kentucky, just really, really, you know, just poise. And whether we, we get off to poor starts sometimes, our guys can gather themselves and go through pockets of adversity. And in the last four or five minutes, we've been a very good free-throw shooting team really even better defensive team we are the first 35 minutes and so just I mean I just a lot of poise a lot of toughness it's been a tough grind all year and it doesn't get any easier you got three games left and they're all against upper division teams in the league and you probably need to win them all to win the league outright so what's your message to the team this week well you know we, we just uh we're gonna, we took off today we'll take off uh, we'll come back tomorrow and film session and, uh, and no contact, take off Tuesday, and Wednesday will kind of be our Monday because we play on Saturday. It, it's just, again, repeat the process again and just just focus on, on every day trying to be the best team in college basketball. Uh, I mean, I told our guys, I said, guys, when you win a lot of games, well, then, then the end of this regular season gets to be so much fun. And I look at it as fun and opportunities you don't want to talk about pressures of winning a league title. Everybody knows that. Everybody's trying to win the, the regular season championship. So we'll, we'll use the, the term opportunities. It's a fun week. You get to play three unbelievable teams at home and in great environments. So uh, we're looking forward to the last two weeks. Well, the process is working, that's for sure. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Kermit Davis, congratulations again. Best of luck this week, and beyond. All right. Thanks, Steve. Kermit Davis, great basketball coach down there in Middle Tennessee. His team ranked for the first time ever this week, number 24 in the Associated Press Bowl. We'll hear more from Coach Davis, Giddy Potts, coming up tomorrow night on the program as they get set for this week's action. Another big story that took place last week, we actually broke it on News Channel 5, is the fact that the Davis Cup Tennis Tournament is coming to Nashville. 
in April. April 6th through the 8th, it'll be held at Belmont's Curb Center. So they're going to turn the basketball arena into a tennis arena for a few days there. It'll be the United States against Belgium in the quarterfinals. And if you aren't familiar with the Davis Cup, it is the most prestigious team tennis tournament in the world. It is 16 nations all competing to win the Davis Cup. Bragged rights is the best tennis nation in the world for that year. What happens? You put together a team, six, seven guys representing your country. You play these other countries, you know, basically sweet 16 on. The U.S. was able to beat Serbia in their opening round match. Belgium knocked off Hungary. So now it's the U.S. and Belgium. Belgium, the defending runner up in this event. And they'll meet here in Nashville at Belmont in early April. Two singles matches on Friday, a doubles match on Saturday, at least one, if not two more singles matches on Sunday to decide it. It's, it's kind of a best of five series, if you will. First team to win three, first country to win three of the matches moves on. If it is three, nothing through the first two days, they will play at least one game or one match, I should say, on Sunday for people who have the tickets for that. You get, at least get a rubber out of that, but the team is moving on at that point. So a best of five series, essentially the U.S. versus Belgium. And it's going to be fantastic. I mean, about 5,000 seats. It's going to be a small, intimate environment. There will not be a bad seat in the entire house. I think tickets are going to be expensive, but I think they're going to be in big-time demand. The atmosphere is going to be awesome. If you've never been around team tennis, especially at the Davis Cup level, I mean, there will be people wearing Belgian flags and U.S. flags and f flags waving and, and nation colors and faces painted and chants between points. It is really a rowdy, rowdy atmosphere. It is not what you're used to. If you just turn on the TV to watch a little tennis every time the Grand Slams come up or they go to Wimbledon or something like that, this is not about the all-whites at Wimbledon or the the grass long courts and, and nobody says a word for five hours as they, they play. It's just a quiet applause after points. This is about chants. This is about drums. This is about face painting and, and screaming and yelling. And so it is a very interesting event for sure. And it is coming to Nashville in April, which I for one am excited about. I think a lot of just sports fans are. If you're a tennis fan, absolutely. But just sports fans in general, this is another case of Nashville stepping up to the world stage to host one of these massive events. I mean, if you think about it, just in the last year, Stanley Cup final couple of major international soccer events last summer got granted the 24th franchise in Major League Soccer history. The Titans go back to the playoffs. Didn't play a playoff game here, but it was a playoff run. That was part of what we saw. You have the debut of Nashville SC. Not quite the MLS team yet, but soccer at the professional level in Nashville. You have the SEC Women's Tournament coming here, the NCAA Men's Tournament to follow. And now, of course, the Davis Cup coming in April. Just, we continue to put our best foot forward, and now everybody around the country, and certainly the sports world, understands what that means. What hospitality in Nashville is, how much fun the events can be, and they want to come. They just flat out want to come to our city and put on their events, and the Davis Cup is the latest example of that. And you don't have to be a big tennis fan to think it's awesome that we keep getting these events, and we keep knocking them out of the park. And for tennis fans here, this is the first time in 40 years Nashville has hosted a tie in a Davis Cup round. So it's been a long time. Hasn't happened in my lifetime. A lot of people out there hasn't happened in your lifetime as well. So just a great opportunity again for Nashville to put its best foot forward for the world. You're going to have people from Belgium here. You're going to have 25, 26 countries around the world tuning into this match national TV here at home on the tennis channel and the opportunity to continue to move on in the Davis Cup is 2007 the last time the Americans actually won the Davis Cup they feel a little bit better about their chances this year home home court advantage to get to the semifinals at least so there's a lot riding on the line here in a few weeks and that'll be very cool and it all comes about because of a very interesting story in which J Wayne Richmond who is the United States Tennis Association the director of events or managing director of events he puts all these things on he's kind of the facilities guy and and the organizational guy for all these events at the usta level 
well, he's a Belmont alum. And so when it came very clear that the U.S. was going to have to be thinking about where they would put the quarterfinal ties in the Davis Cup, Jay Wayne Richmond started thinking, how can I put this in, in Nashville? He grew up in Smyrna. He went to Belmont. He's been a huge big wig at the USDA for quite a little while. And the first guy he called was Rick Bird, legendary basketball coach at Belmont, and said, hey, can you help me out here? Any chance we could do it at Belmont? Well, there's no courts on the Belmont campus, certainly not a stadium in that regard. But they thought, well, what about the basketball arena? And this is a true story, and we'll hear more of this in just a second. But Rick Bird literally got out a tape measure and went out onto the court in the curb center and measured out a tennis court, lengthwise, widthwise, all that, just to make sure that they could put it in there and they had enough space. He found out they did. He got President Fisher on board, several other people. It spread. It became a city issue, a Nashville Sports Council issue, and they put together a very aggressive bid to get the job done. But it all started with a phone call from a, a local Middle Tennessee guy and a Belmont alum to see if Nashville and to see if his school, if Belmont, would be interested in getting this done. So it's a local boy and a basketball legend bringing tennis glory in an international tennis tournament here to Nashville in April in the Davis Cup. And here is our story again from last night on the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central on J. Wayne Richmond and Rick Bird starting the campaign that ultimately got the job done to bring the Davis Cup to Nashville. With the possibility of the U.S. hosting the quarterfinals of the Davis Cup on the horizon, United States Tennis Association Managing Director for Events J. Wayne Richmond had a phone call to make. The Belmont alum called the school's legendary basketball coach Rick Bird to see if there was any way to fit a tennis court inside the curb center. I first stepped it off and then it was and I knew what they had to have so I saw it was close enough that we needed the real tape measure out there and Steve Barrick and I went out there and, and went back and forth and uh, if it hadn't been big enough we wouldn't be here today. With Bird's measurements confirming that tennis inside the Curb Center was a possibility, the next step was convincing school president Robert Fisher that Belmont should put in a bid. Rick gave me that call and when I heard it I thought, oh my goodness, this has been a really positive experience for Belmont. Every place I called just immediately embraced it and said, yes, we can do that, we should do it. With school and city leaders on board, Nashville prepared an aggressive bid, beating out four other cities for the honor to host. We turned down a very aggressive bid from the West Coast, but we felt like we could sell this out. The city would get behind it. There's a great tennis audience here that really don't get to see professional tennis, and particularly this up close. This is a great choice for us. The Davis Cups returned to Music City for the first time in 40 years as a nod to its great reputation for hospitality and a culmination of lots of hard work, making this week's announcement an emotional one for all involved. I came from Smyrna, Tennessee, didn't know which way up was. I got to come to Belmont University. Changed my life. This is a special place in a special city, so for someone who's been in the tennis business as long as I've been, to be able to come back to Belmont, pretty special. Anytime we can bring an international event here, uh, it's just good for the school. And so, to, you know, to play any little part in that, particularly when it's sort of outside what I'm supposed to do, uh, was really fun. Rick Bird talking there after the announcement that the Davis Cup is coming here to Nashville. It is just a cool thing. Again, it comes up April 6th through the 8th. Tickets go on sale, by the way, this Friday for that event. And, and they're going to be in demand. So if you're interested in going and being out there for all three days or even just one of the days, you may want to be looking into that on Friday because I imagine tickets are going to go rather quickly for that event. And who knows when it's going to come back, but it's awesome that it's coming here in April. The United States and Belgium in the quarterfinals of the Davis Cup right here at Belmont University on the Curb Center basketball floor. Correction, on the Curb Center tennis court in there. Should be a lot of fun to see how they spruce that up for a tennis event and what the atmosphere will actually be like. Gotta take a break. When we come back, we will talk some more about the defensive philosophy of Mike Vrabel and the Titans, new defensive coordinator Dean Pease coming in, and also an update on the Predators. On the ice tonight against the Senators. Can they get back on track? We've got an update from Bridgestone Arena. Coming up next here on Sports Live.
on News Channel 5 Plus.